What's up, everybody? Joe Brown here. This is the Heresy Financial Show, and today we are going to be looking at the sanctions on Russia and how they are just utterly ineffective at cutting Russia off from the revenue that they need. It is just utterly useless what is going on right now, and that is evidenced by the fact that uh, Russia initially had to try and stabilize its economy by jacking up interest rates to 20%, and uh, subsequently now they have just dropped uh, interest rates down to 17%, a big drop, and the value of the ruble is back up to where it was before the invasion of Ukraine actually started. So we're gonna talk about why the sanctions are ineffective and what Russia is able to do to completely get around any impact. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, take a look with me at this article from Bloomberg. Uh, essentially, Russia is finding ways to get around the sanctions because the rest of the world still needs energy and Russia provides a lot of the world's energy. And so nobody's willing to say, hey, we'll just give up on getting energy, that energy for ourselves, and we're just going to what suffer in order to make Russia suffer. Nobody is willing to say that. In fact, if we look here, we can see that several Chinese firms were using the yuan to buy Russian coal in March. It's to the point where they're probably gonna make more money this year than they did last year on uh, energy, even despite the sanctions. If you take a look at this, uh, Bloomberg Economics expects that Russia will earn about $320 billion from energy exports this year, which is up more than a third from last year. It's absolutely preposterous. They're actually making more money this year than they did last year, even despite the sanctions. If we take a look at this chart, we can see that, yes, there's been a decent drop-off in the uh, Russian foreign exchange and gold reserves, but from a long-term trend standpoint, it is by it is far from uh, from a staggering drop or a crippling drop in the value of their reserves. Now, here's the thing about energy. There is currently this day, as we are alive, a source of energy that's not reliant on the time of day, that's not reliant on uh, the weather outside, that's not reliant on spewing pollution into our atmosphere, and that is called nuclear. Not only is it not reliant on those other things, but if you look at the total deaths of any of those forms or types of energy production, nuclear is by far the safest. It's estimated there are less than a couple hundred deaths total that have ever happened as a result of any nuclear energy production in history, where something like wind and solar every year kill at least a couple hundred from something as simple as somebody falling off of a roof while they're installing the solar panels. And yes, that is even including meltdowns like Fukushima and Three Mile Island. But interestingly, countries around the world, especially in the West, have been decommissioning nuclear plants that are not yet aged out that are still working because they are going green. And so instead they are relying on less reliable forms of energy production that when they go out, now they're even more reliable on natural gas and coal, things that come from Russia. It's like if you wanted to be in a position that you were 100% dependent on Russia and they could do anything they want and you would have no power to be able to say, hey, we're going to try and impose some pain on you. The best thing you could have done is to decommission nuclear, is to get rid of the most sustainable form of energy on the planet that we've ever discovered and instead say, now nah, we're just going to get it all from Russia. Oh, and by the way, there are some countries on earth that understand the power of nuclear and are currently building nuclear power plants in order the number one country China they're currently building 15 new reactors India currently building six new reactors South Korea four Russia four Turkey three Bangladesh two Japan two Slovakia two Ukraine two the UAE two the United Kingdom two the United States two and Argentina one when you control for population, the United States too is absolutely at the bottom of this list. Other than that, pretty much nobody in the Western world is getting serious about uh, energy, nuclear energy production right now, which means that as we rely more and more on unstable, uh, unreliable, and energy forms that are running out 
that are depletable, that are not infinite, uh, the countries that are going the opposite way and developing the opposite type of energy productions are going to do far better in the long run. Fortunately, it looks like most people are starting to realize this. There's been a lot of new education about nuclear power, how safe it is, how effective it is, how clean it is over the last even just three, four years. More and more people are coming around to this. And so my hope is that in 10 years, the story is very different than it is today and that laws have changed, regulations have come down to make it easier to innovate, develop, and uh, uh, create new forms of nuclear energy smaller reactors, uh, things like that, so that we can move our world toward a better future where we can provide abundant energy everywhere we need it and not be reliant on evil countries, evil people, dictators who decide because everybody has decided to become reliant on them, who can choose what, what and where they want to exert power over the rest of the world. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.